Times Decrypt, an initiative by the Times of India and powered by Coin DCX. Times Decrypt, your go-to platform to learn everything about the world of crypto. Welcome back to Times Decrypt, an initiative by the Times of India and powered by Coin DCX. I am Partha Sinha on Times Decrypt, your go-to platform to learn everything about the world of crypto. Currently, most of the talks around crypto is about trading. However, experts say there's a strong case for people to invest in cryptocurrencies with a long-term view. To know more about the investing aspect of cryptos and the no do's and don'ts, today we have Jitesh Tipe, founder and CIO, Minting M, a leading crypto investing advisory firm. Minting M manages about $5.4 million worth of digital assets and caters to about 2,000 plus clients across the world. Jitesh has agreed to take us through the steps. Jitesh, welcome to Times Recrypt. Mm -hmm. Welcome to this, Jitesh. Thank you, uh, for, thank having you me. for your time and for your agreeing to share your thoughts on this. Mm -hmm. So the, the, basically, the idea of this podcast is the do's and don'ts of crypto investing for the long term. Mm -hmm. So the number one, uh, the first question for us is, <clears throat> what are the what are those do's and don'ts of investing in crypto? So, uh, firstly, thanks for having me, Parda. And um, this is a very good question for beginners, novice investors, and also uh, for the veterans. So the do's and don'ts. Let us focus on the do's. Okay. Now, yeah. uh, crypto as an asset class is comparatively new uh, to all other established asset classes where people are comfortable investing uh, throughout the globe. And uh, majorly, these asset classes are stock markets, uh, equity, uh, bond markets, real estate, and gold. So these are the major, at very high level, the asset classes that are available to invest, and people are comfortable uh, investing in this so crypto is comparatively new so the do's um, uh, or the do would be uh, as an investor one should have a diversified approach and look at crypto as an uh, asset class uh, from a diversification point of view wherein uh, depending on the risk appetite of the investor anywhere from uh, 2 to 10 percent of the portfolio can be allocated to crypto as an asset class. So to get into crypto, there are more than 6,000 tokens uh, or projects that are listed on various exchanges throughout the globe. So out of this, there's a question, where should I invest or how should I start investing in crypto? So to keep it really, really simple, we should or one should get an exposure to crypto investing through Bitcoin. Let us make it very simple. So Bitcoin uh, is the most popular and known crypto. Fundamentals are really strong. Uh, it, it can be called as digital version of gold. It has all the properties of gold. Like for example, uh, gold is what it is for it for its properties and the belief and the trust that we as humans have developed over a period of thousands of years. Similarly, Bitcoin will take some time to get that kind of trust, but slowly people who understand technology, people who understand money, people who understand monetary system are joining hands, are getting involved in Bitcoin as a cryptocurrency. And it's there from last 10 years. So one can have exposure to Bitcoin in his portfolio to start with, understand the volatility because crypto as an asset class is sitting at $2 trillion. Whereas the matured asset classes like stock markets uh, uh, globally is sitting at $100 trillion. And then uh, bonds, real estate and gold uh, together add to another hundred trillion dollars so 200 trillion dollars is the matured asset class versus that crypto is a two trillion dollar which is hardly one percent of the investable asset class that is there in this world within that bitcoin is 
uh, uh, sitting at market cap of somewhere around 600 or 700 billion dollars going up and down around four, $42,000. So just to make it simple, uh, make it short, uh, Bitcoin is something that one can start with. Don'ts would be, don't listen to uh, your uh, you know friends or relatives or your professors or somebody who is telling you that this is a token that is going to come uh, it is into pre-sale um, uh, zone and get exposure to that. It is going to give you 100x returns, 1000x returns. So please don't fall to all of that. Majority of the tokens are scams. So till the time you don't understand how to evaluate any crypto project, uh, uh, I think you should have just exposure to Bitcoin, get used to the volatility and start investing part uh, from there on. You were, you were saying about the fundamentals. So how do uh, somebody who doesn't know much about it, where do they look for these fundamentals? Okay. Because investing and fundamentals, they go hand in hand. So this is, and this is a very new subject. So where should one look for these fundamentals? That's a great question, Parth. And uh, to talk about it, fundamentals, uh, I'll tell you, see, uh, when we talk about stock markets or equity or any company, we have... Uh, um, things like balance sheet, cash flow, PNL to understand the fundamentals. But here in this um, uh, tech world and blockchain era, the things are a bit different over here. Fundamentally, if one has to evaluate a project, so we at Minting M have a framework by the name QTGT. So how it works is basically uh, quality of the team that is there behind the project. T stands for tech of the project, how scalable and sustainable it is. G stands for growth and the adoption of the project. And T stands for tokenomics. So fundamentally, at very high level, there are four verticals of uh, uh, evaluating for evaluating any particular project. The tech quality of the team, the growth of the adoption and the tokenomics. So once you have uh, what I can say skill set or once you get hang off, um, you know, evaluating these things, you can uh, look into smaller projects uh, that are less known. And uh, to start this fundamental analysis, there is only one thing where you should go and that is the white paper. It is like the Bible of that crypto project wherein you will get everything written from start to end, what is the idea? What is the problem the project is trying to solve in terms of decentralization, how the validators, how the nodes are going to work. Um, uh, then you will also get to know about the consensus mechanism, whether it is proof of work, proof of stake, uh, proof of history. There are different consensus mechanism that can be used as part of any blockchain project. So one has to go through the white paper to evaluate, to check for these fundamentals, divide into two high level verticals, quality, tech, growth, and tokenomics. And you get your answer very clearly whether to invest in this project or we don't need to invest in this project. Out of this, the quality of the team needs to be evaluated. That is something what we call as qualitative research, where we have a, a, where one needs to have a very research, research focused team, uh, very skilled and experienced. Rest of the things can be evaluated in a quantitative way, uh, uh, wherein uh, you know you can you can evaluate a project depending on the numbers. So qualitative and quantitative research is the approach to evaluate any uh, any crypto projects towards fundamental side. There is also a technical side to it, wherein people can explore this uh, uh, by by uh, analyzing the on-chain data and also by analyzing the the price action movement of the uh, of the token that represents the project so this is a overview to evaluate any particular project from fundamental and technical aspect okay so for a newcomer that is quite a task definitely anyway and uh, so probably uh, people like you who have been in the space and who are investing probably would do the initial hand holding Hmm. And uh, now, um, and the question is, what kind of investor profile mm -hmm. for whom 
you would suggest they could invest up to, you said up to 10% of the portfolio. Mm -hmm. So what could be the investor profile on where, to whom you would suggest this kind of investment, investing in cryptocurrencies okay. for long term? Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> let us firstly try to understand, uh, you know, the categorization of an investor, a speculator and a trader. So any investor profile who is really serious about creating wealth for long term for their retirement or any financial goals that they want to achieve should have exposure to crypto as part of their portfolio, depending from two to 10%. So people who do their, uh, what I can say, uh, financial planning, wealth planning, where they allocate the investments to particular goals. Like for example, whenever we make any investment, uh, we generally allocate that investment to a particular goal. Like after five years, I want to buy a car. After 10 years, I want to buy a house. After 15 years, I want to sponsor my kids education after 30 years, probably I want a retirement. So depending on that, we allocate part of our savings into uh, this asset classes, which may be equities, mutual funds, debts, gold, bonds, and uh, uh, crypto as an asset class. So serious investors should look at it. And when I say two to 10%, Within investing, within investors, uh, uh, there's a categorization where there are probably high risk takers and there are probably conservative risk takers as investors. So conservative risk takers have maximum allocation towards debt um, uh, or less volatile assets and riskier investors, they have majority of their allocation to volatile assets like uh, equities, uh, and, uh, you know, a crypto. So the, so the risk takers can go up to 10% and the conservative guys who just wants to test the waters can start with as minimum as 2% of the allocation because crypto is a volatile asset. And if you allocate 2% of your portfolio to crypto, and if suppose market goes down by 50%, because 50% is a average volatility in Bitcoin, uh, uh, and if, if it goes down by 50%, if you have 2% allocation, the overall portfolio gets impacted by only 1%. And if you have 10% allocation as a riskier investor, then your portfolio gets impacted by 5% if 50% uh, of the crypto portfolio goes down. So that way, I, I, I can say that 2 to 10% is a is an ideal allocation to start with. But a person like me who is into this market, I have 100% of my savings into crypto, which may sound really, really strange and surprising. Oh, okay. That's a huge thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, anything on the age profile of investors who could get into crypto? Uh, yeah. So uh, age as in, uh, see, we at Minting M, uh, we have clients north of 2000 two uh, in terms of numbers. And okay. the majority, the, the, the mushrooming of the clients is around 25 to 35 uh, years of age. But okay. also we have clients who are of 50, 55 um, um, uh, age group, and they have, um, you know, um, decent allocation uh, on their portfolio uh, around um, uh, eight or 9% uh, uh, towards the highest side because they understand tech and whatever uh, uh, the new thing comes into the market, uh, uh, they, they tend to have, you know, allocation, get, just get started to test waters and then slowly they build up position over a period of time. So I spoke to such investors and I was surprised uh, to know that even in stock markets, these guys have majority of their allocation to tech, to platform based companies like uh, probably India Bart or something like that, because they think that tech is highly scalable. It achieves maximum growth in a limited period of time. So it really depends on the thought process um, uh, and um, age is just a factor. But if a person is really uh, open to understand uh, the new things that are coming in the market in terms of tech or stock or equity, I think age is just a number and um, um, uh, you know anybody um, uh, can uh, have uh, exposure or start investing into crypto. But to answer your question, age is 25 to 35, maximum number of people, probably 70% of our clients belong to this age group.
Okay. And uh, final question is this, the taxation part for mm -hmm. crypto in India. Mm -hmm. uh, does it really change the investment approach anyway? If it does, what is it? How? Okay. That is something well, we wanted to know. Okay. Okay. That's a great question. And uh, we generally, uh, you know, come across uh, encounter this question from a lot of investors. So first thing is that uh, uh, Indian government has come with a taxation, which is a very good thing, a positive step towards regulating crypto as an asset class. They have started with 30%, but the bill is yet to come. So going ahead from here, I cannot comment, but if there is any change in the taxation, I would not be surprised. And uh, even with 30% as taxation, uh, where uh, uh, they are considering uh, the gains from crypto as a other income. Um, um, so uh, long-term investors, I think, um, have a advantage wherein they know, firstly, uh, getting exposure in crypto is no more ambiguous because firstly, there's to get question whether it is legal, illegal. Now, when we have clear taxation coming from the government, this answer, this question is answered and uh, 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 they can start investing. And in long term, for example, if we check uh, the returns of Bitcoin over a period of uh, probably 10 years, so it has given returns uh, north of million percent. Okay. Talking about, talking about Ethereum. So Ethereum started in 2015. Uh, uh, probably uh, below one dollar, and uh, right now it's trading at three thousand odd dollars. So uh, Ethereum itself gave three thousand plus uh, uh, X returns within probably six to seven years of time. So if this asset class is growing this, uh, growing at this extraordinary pace, uh, then for example, if you make probably, let us not talk about thousand times, but even if you make 10 X in three to five years time, and if you pay 30% of your gains to government, then probably your take home is still seven X of your uh, investment. So I think long-term investors have an advantage and uh, taxation gives a clarity to start investing in crypto as an asset class. Uh, and it's a positive thing. Uh, that is what I can say. Great. I mean, uh, that's really been great, insightful, uh, Jitesh. And so thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your views. And uh, this is really great. And, uh, we hope to catch up again soon on these areas. Yeah. Look forward for it. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was Jitesh Tipe, founder and CIO of Minting M, speaking to Times Decrypt, an initiative by the Times of India and powered by CoinDCX. It was about the investing side of cryptocurrencies. Thank you for today, and I'll see you soon on our next episode of Times Decrypt. To learn more about the world of crypto, follow the Times Decrypt column in the Times of India newspaper every Tuesday, or visit www.timesdecrypt.com for expert advice, discussions and latest updates.